we can effortlessly collect data, including attachments in the updated version of the forms experience in Microsoft lists. And today we are going to learn everything from creating and sharing your form, as well as a helpful tip that is overlooked in other videos. So let's nerd out. Here we are in our list at Amy's Animal Shop. We are tracking our pet grooming clients. To start creating our form, we will go up to this forms button at the top of our list. And if your list is in Microsoft Teams, then that forms button is also there. I'm just using list for the full screen experience. Let's go new form. We will give our form a name and in our case, we will call it book grooming. And then we can also add a logo. So this could be any logo. I like to make it a visual representation of what the form's purpose is. Then we also have an option to include a description. And I like to make this informative to the person completing the form on what they should be using the form for. Then on the left hand side, we have a preview of what the form will look like. And by default, this is going to pull the columns from your list, including required fields with an indication of an asterisk. At the bottom of the preview pane, we also have an ability to add a new field, which would be adding a new column to your list. And at the time of recording this tutorial, all column types are supported with the exception of metadata and average rating. So this has been a huge improvement since the feature was first released at the beginning of 2024. Then on the right hand side here, we have an ability to select which fields we want to include in our form. We scroll on up, we will see that groom date being added and then remove. One example where you might want to be deselecting some of these column types will be if you have a list for tracking issues, for example, and at the time that the issue is reported, that is when you use your form experience to collect information about the issue. And then you might have other columns within your list that will be about the resolution of the issue. And of course, you're not going to know those at the time that the form is completed. So you would deselect those items so that they weren't going to be included in your form and then confusing your other team members. So in our example, I'm quite happy to keep all of these form fields here. But the one option that I'm going to add is this attachments. And this is another improvement to this forms feature is that we are able to collect attachments through these forms, which allows us to gather information from various file types. And I will show you where we can locate those attachments a little bit later. Moving along to themes. So here we can customize the different backgrounds for our form, or you can even go create your own style. And if we select these drop down carrots, then there are some additional options. And then this is going to be your themed color. It's quite a minimal addition, but this will be a button and I'll show you where we can locate that later as well. So let's back out of themes here. And then now we can go down to settings. So for these settings, there's only a few. So this is definitely limiting compared to using Microsoft Forms, but how this is built in directly into Microsoft Lists is the biggest advantage of this feature. So here we have a notify me. So this will mean that every time that a new response is submitted, you will receive an email notification. And then here we have accept responses. So this basically turns your form off or turns it back on. And if you have it on, then you can even define a start or an end date for your form. For example, if your organization was getting feedback on a new product release from the employees, then you might indicate a start date and an end date for the feedback form. And then there are also two messages here that we can customize. So this one will be when the form is submitted. You could even just say thank you for your feedback. And then when the form is closed, we're not accepting responses at the moment seems appropriate. Once you have finished customizing your form, then I do recommend going up to this preview icon to just view the form before you send it and share it off with your team. So we can see that description at the top here. And this is just a disclaimer saying, hi, Amy, when you submit the form, the owner will see your name and email address. So this just means that these responses are not anonymous and that is Microsoft just ensuring that that transparency is there. And we can scroll on down just to confirm that everything looks good. 
And then I just wanted to show you as well at the bottom, there's the submit. So that is just that purple color that we defined in the theme. So it is very minimal. Now that our form looks good to go, we can exit out of the preview and now send. So we can see that the send form area is quite a basic experience. And we are only able to accept responses from people that are inside of our organization. So if you were wanting to create a form and collect responses from people outside of your organization, then you would need to go use Microsoft Forms. But just keep in mind that with Microsoft Forms, if you wanted to collect attachments, then you won't be able to collect attachments via a form from people outside of your organization either. With that out of the way, all that we can do now is copy the link and share it with our team. The one place that I would recommend sharing this link is on your team's homepage. So we can go edit, and then you should have a little quick links area here. So I will add a link here. We can go from a link and just paste that forms link. Once that loads, then we can go add. That just takes a second to push through. And then on the side here, we can update the title. So I would say grooming bookings form. And then this page can be used for our grooming reservations team. And then every time that they make a booking, they can use this form to book in our pets. We republish our team's homepage. Now our team can easily access the form from the quick link. So let's pop into Mike's team and take a look. Here we are in Mike's Teams on our team homepage or SharePoint page for the site. And under quick links, we can access that grooming bookings form. So here we can see our form in action and let's just fill in the fields to see this full circle. And now for these attachments, I have got a handful of attachments here from Microsoft files, PDFs, MP4 videos, and we're just going to attach all of those and then we will submit our forms. I just wanted to note that the attachments as well as images will be uploaded after you submit the form. So do just give them a minute to pull through if they don't pull through right away. And here is our form that has been submitted. So we can see that message there, your response is being submitted. Thank you for your feedback. And now Mike is also able to submit another response. So again, that is just something to be mindful of. If you did want to limit only one response per person within your organization, then this feature might not be the best for you. And I would look at an alternative such as Microsoft Forms as it does have that feature. So here is that email notification for each form being submitted. And if we go to item, then it will open up the item within SharePoint lists. And we can see all of those fields being pulled through. And the great thing is that we have those attachments at the bottom. So this attachments field is included within every list item. And it is so helpful that we can now attach items through this forms feature. So let's now hop back into lists and take a look at some hidden columns that are helpful to pair with this forms experience. Here we are back in lists and we can see that Sam has been added. So now if we go up to any of these column types, select it, go column settings, then we can go down to show hide columns. And this will show you the columns that you have created in your list to customize it. But there are also some items that are in the back end that can be quite helpful to make visible within your list view, especially when you're using this forms experience. So let's go on down to created. We'll go created by and attachments and then apply. So now we can see our new column types being added here. So we have our attachments that just shows as a paper clip to indicate that there are attachments associated with that list item. The created by will show you the person that submitted the form. So in our example that we just did, we can see that Mike was the one that submitted that form. And then we have the created, which is actually a date and time that the item was added to the list. So we can see that by default, this is in a friendly format. So we got 23 minutes ago or just the date of November 22nd. But if you want this to show the time all of the time, unintended, then we can go up to this gear icon, go list settings, 
And then we can scroll on down and we can locate the created column. And then this will take us to that column settings and we can go to standard and then okay. And then to get back to our list, we can just click on this list name right here and we are redirected back to our list. And if we scroll on over, then we will see that we are now displaying this in a date and time format. If we need to go back and edit our form, then we can go back into the forms button and here is our form. So you can click on it to bring you to the editor, but there are also some quick action items down here. We select the ellipses, then we can stop accepting responses, which will turn the form off, duplicate it, or even delete the form. Another great benefit of this forms feature is that we can create multiple forms for the same list. This is beneficial if you want to create a branching type system. For example, if you have a list to track time off requests, then you might have a specific form for holiday requests and then another form for another type of leave such as maternity or even bereavement. And then each of those forms would have different columns from within your list pre-populating. Now, if you are doing that and having multiple forms for the same list, then I would make it very clear in the description about what that form is. Now, for more tips on using Microsoft Lists, then you can check out this playlist here, which includes my 10 tips on getting started using Microsoft Lists for beginners, or you can check out this suggested video by YouTube.